the Muslim Day Parade happened in New York City o- over the weekend, and um, it was um, it was a parade calling for the criminalization of defaming Islam. Um, it's the twenty seventh annual uh, parade, and it ended, um, you know, at the end of a street, a full color program that was handed out along the parade route, four and a half uh, four and a half pages an article in this called Islam, the future of America. And the article features the first image shown uh, on this article with a black flag of Islam flying over the white house. And it says Islam is the future of America. The, the article documents the recent growth of the third wave of Muslims in America population growth from 50,000 Muslims to an estimated 6 million in the past 25 years. Mosques have increased from 50 in 1960 to 1400 today. There's some paragraphs inside the document that are, are really worth looking at. The subject of relationships between Muslim Americans and non-Muslims. And the point of view here is very clear. Interfaith and intercultural marriages are strongly discouraged. They state that women are being permitted, uh, are being uh, forbidden from marrying outside of the faith. Two paragraphs um, posted. It's permitted for a Muslim man to marry a non-Muslim woman as long as she converts. And a Muslim woman uh, woman is not permitted to marry a non-Muslim man. In the section discussing the education and upbringing of Muslim children, the paragraph in this that was handed out um, suggests that there is a creation of an Islamic Boy Scouts and Islamic Girl Scouts, and the underlying rules of Sharia have to be mandated in that. Um, the black flag was not only in the pamphlet, but it was also being flown in this parade. And it was being flown. Remember, this is the one that has been flown now over our embassies in the Middle East, all over the world now. Um, and it was being flown and carried down this parade. And then um, they stopped. And they had a big gathering where people were uh, speaking. There is, um, there is a speech, but you will see this woman get up. And she is, you know, one of the Muslim extremists in New York City. And she reads this poem about how the wombs of Muslim mothers need to start bearing the fruit of the new martyrs. We have been infiltrated at the highest levels on both parties, both Republicans and Democrats. This is not just a Barack Obama problem, although I believe Barack Obama knows this and is facilitating I'm going to give you a story in the New York Times uh, that has just come out. In the Arab Spring, Obama finds a sharp test. Listen to this and realize this is the New York Times. Mr. Obama upended three decades of American relations with its most stalwart ally in the Arab world, putting the weight of the United States squarely on the side of the Arab street. It was a risky move by the American president flying in the face of advisors from elders on his staff at the State Department and the Pentagon, who had spent decades nursing the autocratic but staunchly pro-American Egyptian government. Did you just hear that? This is the New York Times saying that it was autocratic and it was bad, but it was at least staunchly American, and that he went against his elder advisors at the State Department and the Pentagon on this. Despite the global outcry over the shooting and tear gassing of peaceful protests in Bahrain, the president largely turned a blind eye. Two weeks after a large street protest broke out in Iran after disputed presidential elections, Mr. Obama followed a low-key script, criticizing violence but saying he didn't want to be seen as meddling in Iran Iran domestic politics. I don't believe that this president sees Iran as a threat. I think he sees them as a balance of power in the Middle East against Israel. And he saw Hosni Mubarak as a guy who was propping up colonialism in Egypt and propping us up in the Middle East. I believe that's true. But that is that is only reading this man's actions over the last few years and knowing who his advisors and his friends and his counselors and his mentors have been throughout his life. It ends with, derived from the Obama character trait, he has not built many personal relationships with foreign leaders. He is not good with personal relationships. It's not what interests him, says one United States diplomat. 
You can't fix these problems by remote control, says one Arab diplomat with long experience in Washington. He doesn't have any friends who are world leaders. This is who this man is. This is why he's not meeting with anybody. Nobody wants to meet with him. Nobody is his friend. And he has taken our friends and he has chased them off. He has betrayed every single friendship that we do have. This goes into his personality fault, his character fault, a huge character fault of thinking that he is above everything. He can just give a good speech and it will fix itself. It doesn't. Beyond that, this president has a mindset that is in line with the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, Tonight on this very network, you're going to see the debut of uh, the new documentary, The Project, Part 1. It starts a two-part series. It's going to be tonight and tomorrow night. We have the intel that we have from the highest levels of the State Department on this project. People that don't necessarily agree with us, but are warning Americans they cannot stay silent anymore. We are in grave, grave trouble. I believe we're on the end game scenario with the Muslim Brotherhood. We are about to enter a new phase. And America, you have got to wake up right now. I know people have been asking for it to be put up on YouTube because they want to share it. It has become very viral um, quickly. And um, it's something that you need to share with your friends.